makeup of these meetups. And so, who here just went back to school? High school, college, otherwise? Does anyone just go back to school? All right, awesome. Is anybody else breaking out knives walking in the building? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome all students and non-students alike. Um, this event is uh, basically serves two purposes. Uh, one, it lets area startups uh, sort of announce themselves uh, to the community. That's the first uh, five minutes uh, pitch that they each give. Uh, and second, uh, it's a chance for uh, the community and the presenter to sort of exchange knowledge. That's the next five minutes, which is a Q&A. Uh, so tonight we have four speakers, and each of them will be following that uh, format of a five-minute presentation followed by a five-minute Q&A. Uh, so uh, keep in mind any questions you have during the presentations to uh, ask our distinguished speakers. Uh, speaking of which, uh, first up is uh, Daniel uh, Foster, uh, who will be talking about uh, App Show, um, which is a product uh, put out by uh, TechSmith. Uh, one of uh, uh, Michigan's uh, premier and uh, long running tech companies. So, please. All right, thank you. All right, so um, who here has heard of TechSmith? How about Camtasia, Snagit, or Jing? All right, those are, those are what we're actually more well known for. It's funny, people are like, TechSmith, you're here in Michigan? We are just up the road in green and white country at the edge of uh, MSU campus. Um, save the booze. And um, so I am actually part of a small team. We're, we're about six people, five and a half, six people that are working on a startup within a 280 person company. So that's kind of its own story in how we do some of that innovation. But I'm really here to talk to you about App Show, which is this project we're working on. And uh, what happened is that at WWDC, uh, Apple announced that they were going to start allowing you, um, through their generosity of course, to put a video in your app listing uh, next to the five screenshots that they also support. A uh, one thirty second video. Um, and so to enable people to make those, they made a way for you to, to hook up your Mac, has to be running Yosemite, to a, a device, has to be running iOS 8, has to be connected with a lightning cable. If all those three things are true, you get to capture the screen of your device onto your Mac. So that's what you're kind of seeing here is, is the concept of App Show. Um, that's kind of cool, but really capture is a commodity. So what we're focusing on in App Show is making an easier way for people to create content. We're really focused on people like indie devs um, and, and startups and, and entrepreneurs who particularly are techie uh, in focus, but they aren't necessarily well-versed in video editing and all the marketing kind of know-how that you need to make your typical video. Um, so we saw this as a great opportunity to try a new approach to creating video. This is how the, the, the app starts up when you first launch it. Um, we're going with this sort of templated approach to creating uh, your video. And the idea is that you can really, just with some simple sliders, um, get the right mood, the right feeling, and the right structure. Um, a, lot of, a lot of video recording and video creation apps, they ask you to do something which is, feels familiar only if you've done it before, which is record a lot of content, and then go through and try to edit out the bits that you want to keep. And we're saying instead, you should be capturing into these little, uh, little containers, little scenes we're calling them, and as you go, you're actually building out your storyboard um, and building out what you are going to end up with. And so along the bottom here you have the storyboard of here's my scenes, um, I, can, I can do simple transitions, nothing fancy, you don't have to be a, an editor. Uh, you get a couple of you know, annotation, like an annotation layer and, and one of the, the features, um, oh yeah, this is, so this is voiceover, so you can say, you know, I want to talk over top of my video and give a little bit of a, an explanation of what you're seeing. Um, one of the things that is unique is adding touch events so you can see where in the video somebody touched. Because a lot of times if you're trying to follow along and you're watching the app, things are just changing and it's hard to understand what's happening on the screen. So we give you a way to visualize those very simply. And um, we're also looking at having music sort of integrated because music really sets the tone and the mood for any video. And so partnering with uh, a provider of licensed music that you can just pull in to your project very easily, you can find the right fit. 
Where are we at in, in production? Right now we're in an open beta, so anyone can sign up at appshow.techsmith.com and we send you a link to download it. Um, this is the, you know, the, the page that Apple has about app previews, and this really is the focus of um, you know, being able to, as of tomorrow, when you go to the App Store, you'll see these videos start to show up as, as developers have created and uploaded them. Um, I have one here. Let me see if I can play it. This one was created with, this was created with App Show. We didn't make it. It's one of our customers, one of our first beta customers um, made this video. So, and, you know, and his feedback to us was, like, I know nothing about doing this, and I was just shocked that I could sit down and create a video. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't blow you away as a very fancy video for someone who's really into video creation, but it's, um, it's something that he wouldn't have been able to do without a tool like AppShow. So one of the ways we're trying to gain reach and customers is, well, all these things. So we've kind of pulled out all the stops, and um, I will say that among those, one of the most effective things has been Product Hunt. Uh, we got featured on like Product you. Hunt. What's that? That's how I reached you. <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, so it was great for visibility. We got a lot of new signups that way. Um, yeah. Time's up. Thank you. As previously mentioned, now is the uh, Q and A uh, portion. Um, so, uh, questions uh, from the audience about uh, App Show or TextMap. I was wondering if you talk to Apple about doing this. Do you have a partnership with them, or do you do you just get early access to their APIs, or how's that work? So uh, the question was, do we work with Apple? We uh, we have one contact at Apple who, or actually two, one on the tech side and one on the who um, is more like an evangelist working up with the app previews. Um, but mostly we dug in and figured out what APIs to take advantage of. If you have technical questions, my colleague Greg here is a developer, um, so he can answer those. But we're essentially taking advantage of the same um, APIs that, they're, that they've made available that QuickTime is using to capture from the device. Um, but then we have those contacts there more to ask questions and try to get a little clarity when we can and push ahead our bug reports. Like, hey, please, we could use some help with this. What's the pricing? So we're going with a, um, we won't be able to take money for it until we're in the Mac App Store, and we can't get in the Mac App Store until Yosemite is shipped, because we're built on Yosemite. But once that happens, probably in October, we're planning to, to go with the subscription plan. Um, so one month, three month, 12 month subscriptions, and the one month will probably start out in the $10 range. So basically you get unlimited productions during that month, produce as many times as you want. Um, and we're actually being even more generous in the sense that you can, before you pay us a dime, you can output as many watermarked videos as you want. So that lets you really dial in and say, will this give me the output that I want? Will this give me the quality I need? Um, and you can use it that way and then make your watermark one and then pay us. Curious what you meant about the, the startup within TechSmith. Like what, 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 what makes your, your unit or department or, or uh, whatever different uh, than the normal TechSmith uh, way of doing things. Right. So with 280 people, you know, we have the full range of big, you know, like development teams, and then you've got um, a, a marketing group that sits in a separate building and stuff. So I actually was part of that marketing group, and so one of the differences is, is these smaller startup teams are cross-functional. So it's you know me as the as the marketing lead and kind of communication guy. Um, it's a, a product a product marketing product manager -y sort of guy who, um, who actually was the one who came up with the idea and then pitched it and, and got it to be accepted. And then two developers and a, and a QA tester and a UX guy. So um, having that real cross-functional team working on one thing and being very focused on it is one aspect of startup. I guess the other aspect is, in, in this particular case, it's a market that we're not already super um, familiar with. You know. Uh, we have users among basically every horizontal out there, but it's not like you go to iOS devs and they all know TechSmith. So what my, what my task has been is to try to get us more awareness in that in that segment. What about competition like ScreenFlow, etc., which app developers are currently using to make these kind of videos? 
So what Apple says you should use, well, first they said IBOB at WWDC. It turns out it didn't work because the dimensions are wrong. So then they put out a, a, a PDF that says uh, Final Cut Pro is what you should use. So we are competing against Final Cut Pro. We're competing against, you can do this for, you can do capture for free with QuickTime. So, um, you know, in, in some sense, the capture is a commodity. Uh, ScreenFlow is out there for editing. Our own Camtasia product is out there for editing. Um, but what we're, again, what we're really focused on is not just the capture part and not timeline nonlinear editing. We have Camtasia for that and we're not competing against ourselves there. We're really trying to lower the bar. And so this sort of structured content creation where you're recording each bit. You're not recording a lot and picking a little. You're recording what you need. And you can do a multiple takes very easily um, and then move on to the next segment. We've even heard from Camtasia users who, uh, who said, I could have been doing this with Camtasia all along. Like, I never just thought about using the tool that way. And so I think the tool suggests the use, you know, in a lot of cases. So we're trying to really get people to think differently about structuring their content, and we're hoping that really lowers the bar. We want this to be easier than iMovie, um, quite frankly. Are there, are there other places uh, where these movies could be used, or you know, are you interested in uh, helping Android users, or you know, tablet uh, uh, app people? Right. Yeah. Great question. So, um, I, and I kind of neglected to, to, leave to, to mention this, but these app preview 30 second videos are really just our tip of the spear part of the strategy. Um, we are wanting to build out App Show's capability to make longer videos. So, so our initial even users have said, I would love to make marketing, or training or support videos that are longer than 30 seconds with this. And so that's kind of what we're going to do next as we build out the functionality. And then other platforms, we'll see. So very cool. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I wanted to uh, uh, use this uh, brief interlude uh, to uh, thank some of our sponsors. Uh, this event would not be possible uh, without the University of Michigan uh, Law School uh, Entrepreneurship Clinic. Um, they are the ones who uh, very kindly let us use this uh, wonderful space uh, every month, uh, so thank you guys. Uh, also, our uh, wonderful uh, video recording is provided by r 2 v I've just been informed that the pronunciation is uh, a French. Uh, and so uh, thank you guys as well. Uh, and last but not least, least uh, A2Geeks. Uh, A2Geeks is this really weird uh, meta organization in Ann Arbor that provides uh, organization to uh, meetups like this one. Uh, it's sort of like a Kresge foundation for like Ann Arbor meetups, if that analogy makes any sense to some people. Okay, yeah. So if you've ever been to uh, A2 New Tech, if you've ever been to an Ignite Ann Arbor, if you've ever been to a Geek Tour, all these events are sort of uh, helped planned with the uh, resources of A2Geeks. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, check out the website, uh, hbx.org. Oh no, here we go. Let's do some quick uh, debugging here. And uh, come on, here we go. Okay, so uh, our next presenter is uh, Tong Lee. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, mobile apps at HD Tech, which is not surprising, mobile is the future. Uh, but after a long day, uh, sometimes it's really nice to blast things away with a giant laser. Uh, so please tell us more about that. I think I'm in the wrong place, right? But you, you say green and white, so I'm from uh, Lansing, so not bigger. You guys in the wrong place. Now, anyhow, uh, this is not the, uh, the, the the computer technology. This is the uh, the traditional uh, laser uh, technology within the uh, wider range of market. And uh, the the key point over here is the money is not the technology. So if you watch this video, and the English is better than mine. I don't speak English. Nobody speaks English in the United States. <laughs> According to my English teacher. <laughs> so basically, this laser machine can do uh, a, a wide array of the uh, engraving on the market, almost like every surface you see. And there's one way or the other, and we can put the uh, laser <clears throat> engraving on top. And uh, the reason we can do that is traditional box laser machines trail the laser into a box and we'll be able to liberate it by cutting the laser machine into half, two halves. And the bottom piece, you can remove it, and then you can roll anything under the laser table, um, no matter how big and how bulky and how heavy it is, and you can engrave it. You can engrave it as small as a pen, as big as a 3,000 pound stone in there. 
and also you can lay the laser on the on the material if the material is too big. You can do all, all the, uh, the the key items, and uh, so um, then there's a leveling system on the four levels because laser has to be perfectly focused on the plane of the surface you want to engrave. And the laser uh, has the uh, high power. Right now we have a. Uh, 130 and 150 watts laser tube on those laser machines. Yeah. And one big market with recession free uh, uh, proof uh, market is <laughs> Tumsum. We, we, we have a lot of customers in this area. <laughs> of course, it's away from high tech and computers, but everybody's going to die one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> No matter how high tech you are, <laughs> you need a laser machine. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the uh, rotary device. We can engrave the cylindrical faces. This is a casket. And uh, <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> it's totally different. I know I'm, I'm out of place, but uh, and this is actually. Uh, Simple invention, you cut laser in half, you put laser out of jail, and actually, um, not only we are in the, not only casket and the, uh, the monuments, and now we have universities, we have the uh, government, we have the hardware stores, we have the uh, flower shops, um, we have the militaries, we have the manufacturers, uh, uh, American auto, uh, the auto industries and use those actually uh, with with the build because the open bottom they will be able to build up production line they will be able to use the robotic technologies and throw the parts in there and do the engraving and cutting and throw out right away because you have <coughs> wide open bottom and uh, that's it the vision of AP laser is we are going to try to enable uh, leading the uh, the customers and to engrave every memories and every memory and every dream, every inspiration and every artistic vision of every surface of our life. So that's our vision. So uh, you can see the uh, the laser actually has um, very wide open uh, market. Any Thank questions? You. Yeah. I have a ton of questions for you. Um, I think our audience might as well. Uh, maybe we should open it up first, though. Yes? Um, with the uh, easy leveling system that you're talking about, are those four corners tied together, or are they all individually operated, it's or, individually or both? Operated. Because okay. the, once you roll uh, a big, bulky, and heavy uh, product underneath, and the, your floor and your card and everything is not perfectly leveled, so you're you're you'll be able on, to you, you yeah, focus you'll be it on four different points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Actually, it's three Sorry. points. Depend, define a plane. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, but but we, <laughs> we, we leave the, uh, we leave one, normally you leave, that's technical, you leave the one leg, one leg actually uh, off the way, you adjust three, then you back, go back, just, you know, put pressure on, and just for the stability. Okay. Three legs is not stable. And you, you offer more than one lens? Yeah. You know, focal depth. Where's, uh, where's Mark you okay. How much is your entry unit? What is it? How much does your entry unit cost? Uh, how much does your basic unit cost? Yeah. Uh, basic unit costs from uh, small ones. Desktop costs like six thousand dollars, and up to uh, forty-eight, thirty-six, and that's most common ones we sell uh, for the sign industries, the modern industries, funeral homes and hardware stores, and that's cost 36000 And we got one unit, it's huge, it's like 48 by 96, and big uh, uh, manufacturing uh, capacity machines has 150 watts, 130 watts, that sells for $55,000. So. I noticed in the film, the, the coffin, that has a, a 
pretty severe arc. How much of a depth of field can you get? So that's basically, uh, you have, uh, we have like a, a two inch, couple inches, or inch and a half, and depth of field. So the way you compensate that is you use longer uh, focal lens. So in the camera, the longer focal lens, you got longer uh, depth of field. And if you compare with that, actually, uh, the finest router base, if you do the router, and it's like, uh, it's uh, above one millimeter. But laser dot size is 0.2 millimeter. Even if you use a four inch and seven inch lens, and you still got 0.5 millimeter uh, dot size. So you'll be able to engrave a lot of fine stuff than the, uh, than the router. And now you Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. You know the router. <laughs> I have laser. <laughs> yeah, laser. Okay, great. How long have you been in the business? Oh, we've been in the business. We actually already we've been in the granite business for uh, almost 20 years. And we use laser machine. We use this big you know, country machine. It's pretty, not very smart. So what, it, they, what the industry does is like, if they have a four, four foot by eight foot uh, uh, feet uh, machine, and only material you can put in is a four feet by eight feet. No bigger. Okay, so if I have a stone for like, five feet wide and six feet stone, and no manufacturer in the United States can, can laser engrave that stone. So that's how we de developed our own uh, laser machine. This laser machine was developed back in 2009. We applied patent on 2010. 2012, the patent being approved. So now we, we, we spent three years in trying to get a small market size and trying to Debugging process. You don't want to throw a thousand machines on market and suddenly everything has a problem and you that's tax poor hazard. <laughs> so we are we're running small and running slow and we will be able to uh, get a small uh, a size customer and debugging and, and, and developing it. So now we are very confident. What, what, what did you patent? What is your uh, competitive advantage? Is it the open bottom that you can wheel the material in? It's convertible, yeah. Okay. It's convertible. You can, when you roll the base back in, that's the box out base machine. Yep. When you roll the base out, and that's almost like, uh, it's better than the country. The country machine. Yes. So the product has to come to you to get it done. You can't, it's not a mobile that you can go to a customer site or go to a building or to do the job. Everything has to come to you. No, we sell the laser machine. And the customer actually take the laser machine, there's a customer actually take the laser machine to the job site, and you can even lay the top on the floor and the two are uh, engraving uh, on the floor. Uh, uh, let me um, see if I can find it. Your, your customers, there are hardware stores, wine bottle manufacturers, people that have a lot of stuff they want to laser cut and then sell. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. The thing is, the uh, uh, my customer actually, uh, for example, sign shop. Yes. The sign shop actually they can take the sign, they can use the laser machine, cut the sign, and suddenly they can do the uh, trophies, they can do the uh, uh, signage, they can do the uh, uh, the big big uh, tune songs, they can do the casket. So suddenly I give the customer uh, a way to diversify into wide range market. Then there's a market in between the big country machine and the small box up machine, the chairs and tables and the lights all here, all bulky, everything actually you can throw on the table and you can engrave it. So that market all here is unexplored. Thank you so much. Uh, that uh, uh, well, come on. Uh, after our presentations, uh, people usually stick around. So if you have more questions for the presenters or other conversations you want to have, uh, please do uh, stick around after the presentations for that. Uh, so you need to get access to that. Uh... Okay, cool. Uh, the other thing that I want to announce is that uh, after this presentation, we're going to have uh, community announcements. So if you have a uh, job opening or an upcoming uh, event, uh, either uh, pertaining to technology or startups, if you'd like to announce to the community, please have those ready. Okay, great. Uh, so my name is Eric Jacobson. I'm president of a company here in Ann Arbor called Amplifinity. We're uh, located on North Main Street, down along the river. We have about 40 employees. Uh, to date, we've raised about $10 million in uh, venture capital, and we've been in business for about six years. So if you'd like, I can tell you just a, a little bit about our product and uh, kind of what the company does. 
So the thing about Amplifinity is this. Any company's best customers are the customers that go out and evangelize on behalf of that company's brands. And at Amplifinity, we make software that allows marketers to ignite this behavior and nurture it over time. And in the world of marketing, this behavior has become known as brand advocacy. So Amplifinity is a brand advocacy software company. So if you're a marketer and you want to play in the world of brand advocacy, there's a few things you can do. First of all, you can look at all the people that currently touch your brand. And it's not only your customers, but it's also all the employees in your company, and it's also other people out in the marketplace, opinion leaders, people that might be able to influence um, uh, consumers to buy your product. And it, so if you're a, um, a marketer, there's a few things you can have these brand advocates do for you. You can have them uh, generate leads, create and share content on social networks, or go out and amplify your marketing messages. Well, at Amplifinity, we really focus on the first of those, generating leads. So one way to look at Amplifinity is to say that we make a big software platform that's used by big companies to run very large scale, very complex customer referral programs. And the reason why this has suddenly become so relevant in the world of software, in the world of technology, is that social networks have finally kind of reached a critical mass where people are really going out on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter and asking their friends and family for opinions on what products to buy. And they're doing that even before they pick up a newspaper or turn on the TV or turn on the radio, hear commercials or open a newspaper. Those, those old forms of mass media are really losing favor with marketers. And as people are going out and talking to their friends about what products to buy, it's becoming harder and harder for marketers to participate in those conversations. So Amplifinity presents them as a solution. So here's an example of ways that uh, uh, brands will go out and make their uh, customers aware of a uh, program, a customer referral program. In this example, it's DirecTV, which is one of our customers. So they'll go out and they'll post all these things on the net, or they'll run commercials on TV, and they all have a URL then feeds into our software. And this is a web page that's generated by our software where a DirecTV customer can just fill out a really quick form and, and click on the sign up button. And once they do that, they're taken to another screen that's given, that gives them a bunch of different uh, empowerment tools where they can uh, hit a button to go out and post on something on Facebook, where they can hit a button to print out a coupon on their home computer that they can hand out to their friends or they can uh, print another button to, to connect our software to their contact list so they can email their friends with an offer to, um, uh, to subscribe to DirecTV. And if any of their friends click on that offer, what happens then is that, uh, that the friend signs up for DirecTV and the person who made the referral gets a $100 reward. And with our software, marketers can uh, really run very complex programs where you're running uh, different rewards targeted to different people and uh, the ability to escalate those rewards so that people, the more they refer, the more they earn as rewards. So this is all stuff that's handled by our software. Our company, like I said, is, is based in uh, Ann Arbor. Uh, we just completed a Series B financing round that was led by Draper Triangle. We're also uh, having other investors, uh, pretty well-known investors in the Midwest, which is RSVP Capital here in Ann Arbor, and early stage partners out of Cleveland, Ohio. Our management team is made up of myself, along with Larry Angeli, who's our CEO, the former uh, VP of Marketing at CompuWare, and Dick Beaton is our founder. And for those of you who have been in Ann Arbor for a long time, you've probably crossed paths with Dick. He's a really uh, interesting character. And everybody else on our team has a lot of experience in managing enterprise software companies. And uh, here's a sample of a few of our customers. Uh, we're signing up new brands, big brands, pretty aggressively. So if you're um, a person who's uh, affiliated with a marketing organization somewhere, you want a really killer customer referral campaign, let us know. We'll be happy to help you out. And that's Amplifinity. So do Amplifinity
open any customers, they have to leverage their existing customer base. Do you ever help them find influencers that may or may not be their customers beyond the recall referral? Program? Yeah, often we'll go into a customer and we'll brainstorm with them. For example, one of our customers is ADT, and we put together a program for them that involved realtors, because when people go out and they buy a new home, they might want a security system to go along with that, so we did a partnership where our ADT was able to engage a whole uh, uh, army of, of realtors affiliated with a couple different companies and we enrolled them as influencers and we compensated them for bringing ADT new customers. So yes, we do that, do that sometimes. Yes? Is there a big difference between this and uh, affiliate marketing? Yeah, so if you have an affiliate marketing, uh, if you're a brand manager and you have some relationship with an affiliate marketing organization, you can use our software to manage that affiliate marketer and keep track of them and compensate them. So we have done uh, programs for brands w where we will uh, help automate the management of their affiliate marketing. Yes? Are there any industries this wouldn't work for? So is it, does it work better for digital yeah. industries? So as you can see by those brands up there, almost all of them are uh, big service companies. And so it works well uh, when you're engaging with big service companies and you can, uh, they have a database of existing customers that you can tap into easily. It doesn't work as easily for consumer products companies. For instance, if you wanted to um, run something for uh, you know, a beer company and, and, and refer customers, it'd be very hard to figure out a way to get a database of those, of the beer company's customers and figure out a way that you could do this. Uh, so, so we haven't quite cracked consumer products yet. Yes? Do you have any um, issues with FTC disclosure rules? I know they've been wanting people to disclose if they're financially compensated for yes. making a recommendation. Yeah, actually we've, um, uh, we have a technical solution to that where, um, and I didn't show you all the user interfaces of our product in this because I didn't have time, but uh, if you are um, uh, a brand advocate, meaning that you're a customer, and you go on Facebook to make a post, our software by default will put in that disclosure and we have terms and conditions where uh, we advise people not to edit that out. So we've, um, uh, uh, we're, we're very aware of the regulations around that and we've, we're implementing technical solutions to uh, help protect our clients. Yes? For, for smaller organizations, for smaller companies, startups, do uh, uh, you have uh, tie-ins with things like Stripe or other payment solutions? So if it's, if it's an affiliate marketing or if they're doing the $100 off type thing, um, is it tied in with payment solutions so that that can kind of be a streamlined... Uh... Yeah, so we, we do have partnerships with a few uh, payment solution providers um, that are client specific. Our software program is really designed though, to be clear, for, um, for, for big brands uh, and for uh, you know, big companies that with like thousands or even millions of customers. We do have competitors that target referral programs for smaller businesses. And, you want to talk to me afterwards, I can tell you who some of them might be. Yes? How do you price your service to your customers? Is it based on volume? Sure. It's based on, so we um, charge a monthly subscription fee. Um, depending on the size of the company, that's usually on the order of anywhere between maybe uh, $5,000 all the way up to you know $40,000 a month, depending on how big the customer is. Any other questions? Yes. What distinguishes what you're doing from HubSpot and other inbound marketing guys? Sure. So um, HubSpot um, uh, basically uh, is, is, is more of a thing for um, if, if you have a website and you want to figure out where leads are coming from and where traffic's coming from, and it, it helps you to kind of manage your online presence and uh, manage that as an asset. But we um, are more about uh, integrating to a company's CRM system. So we're feeding leads and you know live new customers uh, into uh, right into the, the, the CRM system or the or the system of records. So it's a difference between uh, capturing data for marketers with HubSpot that can be used for anything, or in our instance, just just feeding in just raw raw new customers into the system. Yes. How do you get the okay from their database to send this marketing piece out? Oh, you mean in terms of um, how do we integrate with our clients to be able to uh, broadcast to their yeah. customers? Yeah. So, um, 
uh, we work with our clients IT departments and, and we uh, it, it varies from client uh, to client but uh, I, I, I don't want to discuss our security uh, provisions too much in the open forum but uh, but 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 we we have a variety of different tactics that we use thank you okay. For those who might be looking for a, a platform on a smaller scale, I know that um, uh, uh, Jeff from uh, Ambassador uh, has presented at HD Tech before about um, doing managing these partner programs for um, small to medium-sized businesses as opposed to enterprise programs, formerly called a seed firm. Okay, this is the uh, community announcements uh, portion. So, are there upcoming events that people would like to talk about? Or yes, Ed. Tomorrow night is Web Analytics Wednesday, um, being held at Enlighten. Um, there's an RSVP and on Meetup. Um, Web Analytics Wednesday is an international group. This is the Ann Arbor group. It meets on Wednesday uh, about once a month during the school year and sometimes during the summertime. Um, you're welcome to join in. It's all about analytical tools, including Google Analytics and Tableau, and bring your questions about crunching data. So please come. Yeah, um, I'd like to invite you to the Search Marketing Workshop, uh, fourth annual workshop. We're going to be holding it November 7th. Uh, interesting here, uh, we've had two marketing presentations tonight. If you're wondering how to create a digital uh, marketing strategy and wondering how to determine whether it's working for you, come to us. It's only 30 bucks, it gets you 20 speakers, Two keynoters, we have the director of social media from uh, General Motors is going to be there. She's in charge of all of their websites and digital communication. We're also going to have the director of social media for the Pure Michigan campaign. And it's not all big companies. We're going to have Duo Security there. We're going to have Food Junkie, all giving you case study presentations of how they did it. $30, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Friday, November 7th, you get a great breakfast and a great lunch. It's at the EMU Student Center, another green and white school, just five miles over that one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm with Message Blocks, and we're organizing a game of Who's Your Favorite Celebrity? Um, it's a game that has really good content, and it's a lot of fun. Um, we even got Domino's a sponsor, so there'll be free pizza. So if you're interested, just come talk to me. I'll also post the link um, to the meeting page. Great, awesome. Yes. Uh, I, I'm with uh, Port Innovations. We're a new startup out of the Ann Arbor uh, Tech Transfer, started by a U of M law professor. Um, we're are uh, essentially putting a lot of simple uh, um, uh, cases, bringing a lot of simple. Uh, cases online, so you don't have to go to court uh, for, say, traffic uh, violations or for uh, simple warrants, other minor infractions. Um, and we're building a system to do that. We've piloted in two courts in uh, Michigan, and we're looking for uh, Java developers with uh, uh, Spring Framework uh, experience, uh, MySQL, and uh, and. Uh, on any NoSQL uh, no database uh, experience. Cool, thank you. I think I saw it. Hi, um, I'm Sophie. I work for Inkwell Venture Capital based out of Birmingham, Michigan. Um, we recently opened up a co working space also in Birmingham, and within the next week or two, we're thinking of doing um, like a free co working week. But if that doesn't happen, then we'll, we're also going to have tours available. So if you guys are interested in a co working space in Birmingham, Michigan, find me after. Awesome, very cool. I did have one of those things uh, quickly. Uh, all Hands Active, uh, Ann Arbor's uh, makerspace uh, that has a giant laser cutter that looks uh, actually uh, somewhat similar, uh, is going to have an open house uh, this Friday at 7. Uh, if you've been curious as to uh, what is in that space, uh, please come check it out. We're going to have all sorts of uh, tools and demonstrations available, of member projects and stuff like that as well. Hi, I'm uh, David. I'm the CEO of Social. And uh, we help people discover music and news uh, through photos. So we're looking for um, some JavaScript developers um, that have experience, like no sales. Uh, please uh, get in touch with me. Um, maybe after. Uh, yeah, we have a really cool product. So. Awesome. And then maybe one last check. Yes. So on Thursday, um, there's going to be a meetup for um, uh, 
uh, AWS Michigan. So AWS Michigan is is um, Amazon Web Services, and also we other we do other cloud platforms as well. Um, so this this Thursday, um, check the meetup group awsmichigan.org. I think um, we're talking about cloud architecture for music-based social media website. Yes. Uh, my name is Mike Feldkamp. I work for Optimi. We're an IT consulting firm that staffs for uh, companies here in Ann Arbor. Uh, currently looking for Android and iOS developers to join a startup here based out of Ann Arbor right on Main Street. I'm going to embarrass her. This is Shilpa. This is her second day in Ann Arbor. She moved up here from Dallas. She's their rock star Android developer and we now need to build up her team and she's excited to work with some new people. So cool. anybody that's in mobile development or nobody know someone that is, please come see us after. Thanks. Okay, and you can close us out. One more thing, um, relative to events, uh, I've started a Twitter feed, A2 Events, that's A, the number two in the word events. If you at sign that, um, it will show up in my inbox and I'll retweet it uh, as long as it's anything reasonable. So, <laughs> you know, it's not, which is to say it's not automated, it's human modulated by me. Um, and, and I'm sure that some people here might not know um, Ed, um, but he, probably he knows the most people in Ann Arbor, especially in the tech scene of, of anyone else here. He's not just some random guy running a Twitter account. He actually, he actually knows a lot of people in Ann Arbor. So his, his message uh, goes out widely. You're also invited to lunch. Uh, the A2B3 group meets every Thursday for lunch. Uh, it's a meetup. Um, we pick a restaurant every week. Uh, it's Madras Masala this week, but it's a random restaurant. And B3 stands for Bibimbap, which Madras Masala <laughs> does not serve. But uh, it's a long story, and um, you're invited to lunch. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we're going to uh, finally allow our, uh, our last presenter to take the stage. Uh, please welcome uh, Barry from Try to See. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Barry McDonald. I'm with a company called Try to See. I'm the founder of Try to See. And Try to See basically is a mobile app, uh, Android and, and iOS based, that allows you to connect with people, places, and things in the physical world. Uh, we launched last summer in Metro Detroit, and we really are focusing on maybe the opposite end of, of where app, app affinity is focusing. We're, we're trying to focus on the very, very small mom and shop, trying to help them figure out how to grow their customer base, uh, how to reward their customers so they come back and shop more in their uh, you know, shopping districts. Uh, as I mentioned, Try to See is a, a system for connecting uh, people, places, and things. So what does that really mean? The, the, the app basically, and I know we use QR codes, so a lot of people are going to say, oh, you use QR codes, that's it. Uh, we, we use QR codes as an entry point for the customers to be able to interact with people, places, and things. So if I walk into a store, a small business store, I can scan in at that store to check in. When I, when I check in, the business uh, controls the profile behind the card, and it basically pops up whatever deals the business is, is offering to that uh, customer. The more they check in, they can set up the deals so they get different deals based on the number of times that they've checked in. It also, of course, captures the information on who's coming in so that that customer, uh, that, that business can then reach back out through any of their social media channel, through you know, MailChimp or constant contact, et cetera. Uh, so for instance, we're, we're doing business, we're doing some work right now in Livernois Avenue fashion. Again, this is in Detroit. So what we've done is we're trying to build a collaborative uh, program for the uh, businesses in that area. And what I mean by collaborative, we have all of the shops listed in the system. So a user coming into that, that shop and district will be able to go into one store, sign up for the program, and then as they move around each of the store, they're gonna encounter one of these cards. And as they move around that shop and district, they can check in at any of the, the other stores. So all the profiles for each of the businesses is, is in the system. Each business controlled their profiles. So they're basically doing a you know, not, we're not trying to uh, recreate their website. It has a very simple profile, a picture, their social media links, links to their, uh, links to their, uh, you know, any websites or, or uh, uh, websites or any social media sites. Uh, it has a phone number, it has an email. So if the customer needs to reach out and contact that person, they can. 
as the, as the user interacts with all these businesses, all the information is stored in their profile. So anytime they can go back and look at where have I been. Uh, in terms of interacting with things, we've done things like uh, there was an art fair in Royal Oak uh, called a clay metal class. There were 120 plus artists. And again, we outfitted all of those artists with essentially a try to see profile, again, that allowed the fairgoers as they were going around the, uh, the, the event to basically check in with each of the artists, get information about each of the artists, and again, capture information about what they saw during the show. I mean, if you've been to the art fair, you know you see a lot of things, and by the time you leave, you can't remember anything. So if you, were, if you really wanted to try and reach back out to those, uh, those artists, it's, it's sometimes difficult. We try to see you capture all that information in your profile so you can then go back later on and, and see exactly who you've, uh, you know, you've encountered. Uh, again, it gives the artist uh, the ability to know who came into their booth. We also use it as a way for the people to do, to do a people's choice, which was the favorite artist that we saw during the show. Right? So we can go back out and look at uh, you know, who got the most scans uh, during that session. Uh, we've also uh, used it at uh, speed networking events, and this is where we, we, we talk about exchanging information with people. Uh, at a speed networking event in Ann Arbor with a women's business organization, uh, they, they had a, if you think of speed networking is like speed dating, you basically had a table with 20 people on one side and a musical chair on the other side. So you would rotate after about four minutes. So you had four minutes to try and talk to somebody, tell them about your business, and have them tell you about their business. So you basically had two minutes each. After the four minutes, you got up, moved over to the next one. So we used it there to allow the, the users to quickly again exchange their profile information about their business. Uh, you know, uh, because you can cre also create a profile for yourself, it's a quick way of exchanging you know, business cards. Uh, for, for this session, I'm looking at my time, I'm going to run out of time, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stop and uh, take questions. I apologize for that. I have more to talk about. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. <laughs> Is there uh, any utility of eye beacons for what you're doing? That, that's the evolution, right? Moving away from QRs to eye beacons, so it's, they, they move into that shopping area, being able to bring up the information about a particular business that they're passing in front of. So they can, again, they can see what deals that particular business is offering. So definitely. How's your uptake in terms of businesses using it and also clients using the app? Uh, we, we are struggling right now getting traction. Uh, the, the fact is we compete with a lot of other systems and technologies, including many that are free. Uh, and what we're trying to do is we're, we're, we're trying to work in the community, not only to try and help our particular clients, we're really trying to help the whole community. When I talk about a, a community program, the intent there is that if I shop at one business, that business can uh, communicate with all of the customers that come into that business, but we also link all of the businesses. So any shoppers coming into any of the businesses, you know, that business can also communicate to all the shoppers in the uh, in the, the shopping district. So. disclaimer that you have to sign intimidated me. It was long and complicated and I thought, forget it. Okay. So, just some feedback. Yeah, I, I'm you. not an early adopter either, so that might be okay. All right. I appreciate the feedback. That's something we'll, we'll definitely look at. When you targeted the Livernois area, did you meet with a, like a downtown development authority? Yeah. And are there other areas around Michigan that you're targeting? Right now, we, 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 the way we, we, we've approached things, our, our approach has been to either go to and join up with a Chamber of Commerce, or in the case of the Livernois Business Avenue of Fashion, they have a uh, business association. So basically went to the business association meeting, actually joined the association meeting, uh, and then you know make sure we understood what the issues were that businesses are facing in an attempt to try and, you know, what we, what we truly are trying to do is to help improve shopping in their community. So we're working more than just with individual customers, like so we're trying to improve 
south into that, that district. Other questions? How do you make money? I think you mentioned that um, it's, yeah. it's free for users, so maybe um, shop yeah. pay? It, it, it's uh, a subscription base. Uh, subscription base to, to come in, uh, basically get access to your profile. You can update your profile. You can create those deals. You can see the customers that are checking in at your, your store. Uh, you can send out email, uh, I mean, deal blasts via email. You can also create events so people know exactly what's going on in the environment. Uh, so we do a combination of subscription and also if you're sending out those deal blasts, there is a you know, per uh, use fee that is attached with the number of customers that you blast out with those deals. I feel like we've got the, the chicken and the egg problem because for the businesses to sign up, you know, you need the, the customers. So how do you plan on tackling that aspect of yeah. it? No, that, that definitely is a real problem that we, we face. And uh, in terms of where we're attacking it, again, we the first step is we, we try to work with the business owners, Chamber of Commerce, Business Association, to try and get the businesses into the systems. We create a profile for the businesses. The next thing we've been doing is then we, we really rely on the businesses to be advocate for the program so they can uh, you know, engage their, youth, their customers to sign up for the program. So as each of those businesses sign up customers, it's growing up the entire uh, user base. Uh, we, we've also done things like within uh, Livernois Avenue Fashion. We've surveyed the surrounding communities to try and understand what is preventing them from shopping in this particular area. This is a well-known fashion district in Detroit with one of the more famous ones in the, the city or the state at one point, but it's, of course it's in Detroit so it fell into disrepair. They're on their way back uh, and they have, a very affluent they have very affluent neighborhoods around them, but of course those people move out to uh, Royal Oak or Ferndale to do their shopping and what we're trying to do is figure out what is preventing you from shopping in this area. What they've told us is things like Unfamiliar with the not familiar, being familiar with the businesses, uh, of course, security and is, is one of the concerns. Uh, not really knowing about what's going on, so the app is trying to address those issues by making all that information available to them. Thank you so much. Before we conclude our formal programming, uh, Doug and Kyle, would you like to make an announcement about something? We're going to Pizza House after this. You want to know what Malka jokes are, you have to come find out. Yeah. <laughs> They're good though. Yeah, we got a preview. No pressure. Really cool to stick on for a bit, and then we'll probably head over to Pizza House in like 15 minutes or so. Yeah, probably around Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one more announcement. Sure. Um, I was here last time. My name's Archie. I'm with Ithaca. We run the website jstore.org, which has the last 400 years of academic content on the web for libraries and universities. We're looking for engineers that want to deploy into the cloud. And um, if you know Java or Python, let me know. Come talk. Um, and also, my colleague Spencer Thomas is here as well. So um, say hello to either of us, and we'll talk your ear off about Ithaca and content. And cool. A2B3. And, and, and cloud and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah I have a, I have a first try to be relevant with this group. Now, the, uh, we have actually, uh, I had this idea for a long time. We have actually hundreds of laser machines on the market and all the retailers actually has idle time on the laser machine. And we know all the designers and graphic, uh, very creative people out on the market and we talked to the architects and the uh, interior designers, uh, out, out the exterior designers, all those guys, they want to design something, but they need some guys to do the job. So is it possible, and some of you guys can create a marketplace which link with the, uh, the laser machine owners and architects, interior designers, students in, in the graphic design, artists and, and honeyer in the same uh, 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 website. So actually the designers can get uh, uh, guys who do the job for them. You should, and you should check out thousandgarages.com. What is that? Thousandgarages.com where people register CNC machines that they have and other people have CNC jobs that match them. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll talk after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you everyone. See you next month.